Yeah, September uh, 26 uh, was a Friday in 2008. And in our last segment, I talked about how the night before I, I checked in my hotel in New York. I was there in the bottom of the crisis. Everything was hitting the fan. I had all these meetings with clients and with money managers and and uh, the Washington Mutual News had, had hit the wire and 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 uh, the Friday the twenty sixth I think is even more profound. I I I talk about this walk and and you know there's a lot of stuff I'm kind of skipping in the story because I just want to keep the underlying narrative, which to me is just something I'm really never going to forget. But I had been in a meeting um, at thirty sixth Street and Madison Avenue, and it was middle of the afternoon. And I come out of the meeting and I get the report that Citigroup is going to be buying the assets of Wachovia. Wachovia is going to go down. And and one week earlier, when I was talking about the Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs issues, Wachovia was one of the banks being mentioned that might buy Morgan Stanley to save them from their troubles. Goldman Sachs uh, was in the conversation about a merger with Wachovia. And now here we were with a stock that had been trading at, I believe, $7 uh, the night before. It may have been $10. Now Citigroup was going to offer $1 and the, uh, they were going to, uh, lose one. They were willing to be risk, uh, exposed to a billion dollars of losses. And they wanted, I think the FDIC to back up the next 40 billion of losses after that. And they weren't going to buy their wealth management firm, which at that time, Wachovia had kind of merged together Prudential uh, First Union, Evren Securities, and a, a pretty good-sized firm called A.G. Edwards. That was all under this Wachovia umbrella. That wasn't even going to be part of the deal. Uh, you know. So I'm reading this, and, and then I, I believe we, I, I stopped at uh, 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 another place on Madison, and, and they start talking about a uh, bank in, in Europe was interested in bidding, and there were other merger acquisition talks. And then I got to Bill's Gay 90s at 54th and Madison, real old place I was having another meeting at. And all of a sudden, then the wire's changing and saying, looks like uh, Wells Fargo wants in on the action. And then it was the next day, Saturday, that the specificity came in. And Wells was actually offering $7 a share instead of $1 a share. Again, way below the market value where the stock had been. Um, but they weren't going to require FDIC support and they were going to buy the whole thing. And that ended up being the deal that went through, although City and Wells Fargo had to kind of sue each other for a long time because City felt like they had a deal with Wachovia and the Fed got involved and everything else. So it was kind of messy. But um, yeah, Wachovia is not really the story here, even though they're at the heart of this story, right? I mean, it was a massive bank, but what caused the problem was a company called Golden West Financial. Now, there were other problems too. They also, like everybody, had a loan book that was you know, filled with garbage. But they had acquired a subprime lender. Um, and, oh, I always forget this guy's name. He was this hyper, hyper liberal Democrat, uh, big donor Democratic Party. And I, want, I, I just can't remember his name. He passed away a number of years ago. Saturday Night Live ran a big skit about him and they made, and they made uh, NBC take it away and all this stuff. But it was uh, a company called Golden West Financial that had kind of originated the negative amortization loan where you could actually make a payment below what you owed the bank every month and it would just uh, add to the principal you owned. And they were kind of pioneers in this uh, ridiculous product. And and uh, they, I believe it was $25 billion that Wachovia had paid for this gem of a company that was worth zero and had blown up and left a massive hole in their balance sheet. And, and, and so, again, you were dealing with um, a, com a, a complete inability to fill that capital hole that had been created with toxic assets that they had allowed to, to enter the fray. So the only solutions were going to be federal bailouts or other partners of greater financial strength coming in and doing deals. Wells Fargo was legitimately better off and able to do the transaction. We're going to find out as we go down this path through the fall that the idea that Citigroup almost transacted on it is very ironic, considering that by November of that year, after receiving $25 billion of TARP money, 
after Sm selling Smith Barney off to Morgan Stanley, actually that came, uh, pardon me, that didn't come till December, but still we're just off by a month. But the even city ended up needing another $300 billion, give or take a few bucks of uh, backstop from Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve. So uh, it, it was very interesting at this time period how rescuers were becoming rescued one week later. That's how quickly all these things were moving. And on this day, as I walked down Madison Avenue, about 20 blocks, I saw three different rescuers and rescuees changing hats. And this, the, the, that was the week that was.